Welcome to the Motoring Podcast. Uh, this is an e-scooter special edition uh, and if all of this goes well uh, it's coming in both video and audio format to your devices. Uh, I'm in Milton Keynes uh, and it's a sunny Saturday morning and I'm sitting in the corner of the car park looking like a, a bit of a YouTubing fool. Uh, so, yeah, because I want to try uh, some of these new e-scooters. We've talked about them on the podcast a bunch of times. Uh, we've discussed it. We've talked about the different, uh, the different schemes. We've talked about what's legal and what's not legal. And uh, I want to shop, basically. And the reason I've come to Milton Keynes is because they have more than one uh, system in place right at the minute. I think they have four different scooter companies on trial right now. So the plan is to try out as many of those as I can in the next little while and see how I get on. Now, there's a couple of things to say about e-scooters generally, first of all, uh, and that's about the law. So if you have or if you see someone riding an e-scooter which isn't from one of the rental services, so it's not from Bird, Lime, Spin, Ginger, uh, Voy, oh, that's the five I can remember straight off the top of my head. Uh, then, and they're riding it on the pavement, on the road, uh, in a cycle lane, then that is illegal, okay? Uh, there is no doubt about that whatsoever. The only legal e-scooters uh, for riding on cycle paths uh, or, in, or on most types of urban road are the, are the, rental, uh, the rental ones. So that's what I'm going to try. As I say, the reason for coming to Milton Keynes is because it's got many different systems and, uh, and as well as that, it has segregated cycle paths. So uh, I've never ridden one of these before. I've never even, um, I've never ridden a motorbike. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know quite how much dynamic filming there'll be uh, of me falling off, but I'll see what I can do to try and, to try and share it and work it out. Now, uh, I'm in one of the more distant car parks According to the spin app, there's two of their scooters just over there. So I'm going to go off and see if I can find them. So I've got a scooter. Uh, I, I didn't film getting it because there were lots of people around and I'm very self-conscious about wandering around with a, a camera on a selfie stick. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, yeah, so um, it's one of the spin ones. If I step over here a bit, you can, you can see it. Uh, it's one of the spin ones, uh, and it was really quite easy to unlock. Uh, first of all, I had to have my payment method registered. The spin app on, on Apple uh, was it is very easy. It takes Apple Pay. It, it just <laughs> it just works, you know. Uh, and uh, so that that meant I didn't have to scan. Uh, I didn't have to scan stuff. I didn't have to put in my credit card number or anything. What I did have to do. Uh, what I did have to do was uh, scan my driving license, uh, take photos of both sides of it, making sure it was readable, so that they can make sure I have a I have a a, a proper UK uh, legal driving license. So that all done, it just kind of unlocked it. I went to the bike, scanned the thing, hit unlock, uh, and then I could get on it and ride it. Well, it took me a little longer than that to to figure it out. It's really not difficult. Um, it's just. <sighs> working it out for the first time. So if I go down here, and if I swing you around, hopefully you can still hear me, because this point is quite directional. Uh, controls are pretty much as you'd expect. So there's a brake here. There's, this is a bell. Yay. Uh, and this is your throttle. Uh, when it's active, there's a little screen here. That turns my lights on and off, I believe. And you see, that's the, that's the code that you scan. Uh, just there. There's some instructions down here about um, how to start, be responsible, don't be an idiot, uh, wear a helmet, which I'll notice I'm not doing so I've got to pick mine up. And then that's the rest of the scooter. The, the battery and everything is under the, the kind, of, kind of skateboard. You turn the handlebars to turn, obviously. And, uh, and that's it. Look at that. Dramatic and beautiful. Fine rear three quarter there. I should have given it a little bit of turn on this on the steering. But yeah, um, 
I'm going to go and have a, a scoot around. It's it's easy. That's I find the throttle on this one is a little stick, sticky, uh, and so it takes a couple of pushes, and then once you're off, you're off. It's easy to keep your balance. Even I haven't fallen off yet. Um, that'll be hilarious. And uh, yeah, that's it for the moment. So I think I'm going to go and try and see if I can find a scooter from another service um, somewhere nearby or maybe on the other side of the center and have a bit of a bit of a, a splat around and see how it goes. But it's great fun. I've come across the car park uh, obeying traffic rules naturally. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, uh, I'm having fun. <laughs> and I'm finished. I've had a bit of a play around, obviously, with the, uh, with that spin scooter. So uh, I had it for 18 minutes. So there was a little bit of riding and there was quite a lot of time of it locked, which I got charged for all the time I had it locked uh, when I was recording the last piece of video. I actually recorded the last piece of video twice because I hadn't started recording properly. As I say, reasons we don't do YouTube, number 34. Uh, but that cost me, so 1.8 kilometers, 18 minutes of ride time, and it cost me £4.75, uh, which, it's not cheap, is it? Uh, that is definitely more expensive than, say, getting the bus, but although it gets you to from pretty much where you are to pretty much where you want to be uh, very, very quickly. Uh, it's great around here, didn't really have to cross any roads, could just keep to the cycle paths, uh, and that generally worked. It, it worked worked really pretty well. Um, it's expensive though. It is expensive. Uh, so we'll see. Now I see that there's a Lime scooter has been left up there. I parked mine beside it. I had to submit a picture of where I parked it uh, afterwards. And uh, yeah, we'll give that a shot and see how it fares. Um, yeah. Oh, lots of sun. Um, right, uh, Lime scooter. So I've just tried it. Let's, uh, let's have a quick tour of the Lime scooter here. Uh, here it is, beautifully, safely parked, you'll notice. Um, yeah, so it has, again, as before, brake there, to, yeah, brake there, bell here, throttle here, just the same. It's got a sca uh, screen in the middle to scan, uh, to ride, and a light down there to show whether it's going to work or not. I, I don't know if the difference between this and the spin one was the surface I was on, but that one there, if the on these sort of pavers that you can see over my shoulder there, was so uncomfortable. It would have your fillings out, really would. Um, really pretty awful. So not hugely impressed. The cost for this one is one pound to unlock it, and then 20p a minute there afterwards. Uh, so just my 600 meter scoot around the block a little bit uh, cost me two pounds 20 uh, on these. Fewer around, I see. Um, I mean, I had to walk a little bit to get that one. Uh, I got to the first one and it said, no, this isn't available. Uh, so that was a bit annoying. Just when I got to it, having sort of charted the route on the, on, on the app to, to take me, uh, to walk me to the next one. Uh, it also took a 10 pound deposit out of my account. So we'll see how long that takes to go back in again. So it was, yeah. Again, I could use Apple Pay, so that helped a lot. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, I wasn't scanning, scanning parts and stuff. And again, but I did have to scan the, uh, I did have to scan my driver license. It doesn't seem to be a way you could do that in advance. Uh, you have to wait until your first, your first ride before you can scan it. It must just be to do with the way that the, the sort of UK implementation of the app. Uh, yeah, that's it for, 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 for Lime. So Lime, you see, well, Oh, it's all double mirrored. Hang on. Yeah, live as you can see is the uh, are the green and white ones. Uh, on my way around, I spotted some of the ginger scooters, uh, which surprisingly are not bright orange. Uh, so I'm off to seek down one of those and to see if I can make it. Uh, see if I can make it three in a day. I was going to try ginger, the 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 third of the trio. Uh, that we're up for up for testing today. Now you can see up my shoulder that there is a whole bunch of them. There we are, of their scooters just there. Now, the thing about 
those is that they have they've got two things one they've got a very very convoluted sign up procedure uh, the others allowed me to do things like as I said use Apple Pay uh, which in turn <clears throat> hid my email address all these kind of things um, this I haven't got as far as the payment method yet it is so long and so complicated uh, and I was having to sort of do so much that compared to the other two it's just not worth it now that'd be great if it was significantly cheaper and it is it's uh, two pounds for 20 minutes but and here's the, the big but there are only about five parking zones that you can park the ginger uh, scooters in so unless you put them in one of those it's not finished and that's a bit of a pain that really really hits uh, that really really hits the just how useful this is uh, and how convenient it is so I don't think I'm gonna bother with ginger to be perfectly honest uh, and that's a bit of a shame so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to try and find myself a spin scooter and try to get back to the car and because this is Milton Keynes I'm lost because it all looks uh, looks the same so uh, yeah there's there's some modern buildings and some nice tree line avenues and a little bit of dual carriageway but I need to find the car <laughs> but first let's go find another scooter I recorded my original conclusion uh, just before I left Milton Keynes but I kind of as I listened back to it I realized I'd missed out a few things so apologies for being home uh, again uh, and uh, and not being uh, on site so to speak um let's take a little bit of a look and, and a little bit of a chat through through the services and, and uh, that that I tried uh, as far as I tried some of them um and it's worth mentioning first of all that what I was doing uh, on Saturday was not perhaps the perfect use case for scooters of course these are there to aid uh, mobility to help people get from somewhere they are to somewhere they need to be uh, and uh, and then back again I imagine at some point I didn't have somewhere I needed to be and I think that that's the first reason that this possibly wasn't the best the, the best test uh, I was not following the anticipated use case of commuting, of going shopping, of any of these things. I was purely there to try the scooters. So I had a tool, but I didn't really have a problem to solve with it. And, and the fact that I don't, I don't know uh, Milton Keynes very well, uh, probably didn't help. So, yeah, a couple of issues with the methodology there. But nonetheless, it's, it's worth mentioning it. And I think that some of the other stuff and what I'm going to go on to say remains pretty valid uh, all the same. So let's look at the three services that I tried uh, anyway. So first of all, there was, uh, there was Ginger. Okay, it was a bit of a non-starter. Uh, it took a long time to, to, to sign up, to log in. And I know that that's a one-off, but it was still, uh, in this case where there was more than one, one scooter system, it was still uh, something of a turn off. The real challenge for me though was that there were only the five different uh, scooter parks where you, sh where you should uh, drop off or, or collect the scooters from. If those work for you, this will be a good service. It is definitely the cheapest uh, in the Milton Keynes trial by a considerable distance, so two pounds for 20 minutes. Uh, and if the locations are the right locations for you, then then I can see how it could be part of your part of your daily commute, part of your your sort of new mobility. Uh, spin next up, uh, it was I was it was definitely the most numerous in terms of scooters. Uh, anecdotally, I mean I can't. They were the ones that you saw, and they were the ones that generally you, you I, I saw people using in and around central uh, Milton Keynes. Whilst there is no uh, unlocking fee, they are quite dear though. Um, I couldn't see and I couldn't find any particular way of uh, way of being able to unlock discounts uh, with with Spin. A couple of things about the app. The app, it is very easy, even if you have no intention of using the scooters, it's very easy to, to flag uh, problems that there might be with the service, or to, and that includes uh, people misusing it. So uh, you can report bad riding, you can report 
poorly parked or poorly placed scooters as well. And speaking of poorly placed scooters, because I, I see that this has been one of the the um, uh, one of the things on Twitter that was being flagged with the with the trials in Northampton uh, is that people are saying, well, they're blocking the blocking the pavements. They're in the way. They're they're, they're a pain. Get rid of them uh, already. And uh, one of the things is that it, it does uh, is that the app does say so you you sort of rate how well parked the scooter was whenever you collected it. Uh, and then whenever you leave the, the, the scooter, whenever you sign out, uh, it prompts you to take a picture of the scooter where you've left it. Uh, so it really is saying, it, it really is helping sort of balance out the check, the, the, the sort of checks um, and, and sort of controlling the risk of people just scattering scooters or, or, or willy nilly, I suppose. Uh, so that was quite good. It was definitely the best app. Definitely the best app. Uh, the third one was Lime. So Lime somewhere in between uh, Ginger and Spin, as far as I was concerned. Uh, it does have an unlocking fee, that £1 to unlock before you've even scooted uh, for the first little bit. Uh, and then it is fractionally cheaper than, than Spin thereafter. It is possible to buy a Lime Pass, uh, which will bring down... Uh, which will bring down the rates for regular users. Uh, by the way, all the rates that I'm quoting and mentioning uh, are all correct as of as of today, which is Thursday the 24th. Um, I think it was all recorded on Saturday the 19th of September 2020. So they might have changed slightly, uh, slightly by the time that you watch this. But yeah, Lime, very much like Spin. Uh, as I said at the time, I don't know if I got a bad scooter. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was blooming uncomfortable uh, compared to the 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 Spin and Ginger scooters, which are essentially the the same model from Segway, um, uh, just just recolored, rebranded, and and in in a few small ways. So the last thing, how did I find and how did I feel it was as an alternative to, to commuting or as part of your sort of commuting mobility package? Uh, I know I sound like I'm throwing buzzwords left, right and centre here, but it, it's almost impossible to just discuss this kind of thing uh, without, uh, without coming up against that challenge. Uh, the cost to me seemed to be the, the, the deciding factor in, in this. If, as I say, if they're where you want them to be, you know, if they are there where you're, 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 where you need to collect a scooter, and if it's possible to drop it off where you need to drop it off, then they are actually a really good way of being uh, not as bulky as a bike, um, uh, and probably quicker than a bike as well, uh, from A to B, uh, with sort of minimum. Um, a sort of minimum awkwardness uh, there. The challenge really is um, is the cost. Is the cost because if you need to go somewhere that's fifteen twenty minutes away, then you're at a fiver. If you need to go somewhere that's fifteen twenty minutes away on the bus, you're a couple of pounds. So there is a significant premium to using these services as they stand at the minute as trial services. Now, I don't know how that's going to be priced in the future. I don't know where it's where the price point is going to fall, but that is the current challenge. Um, it's quite pricey. If you were... If you were... If there was some way to pay in one go to say, I'm going from A to B, and I want to take... Uh, the train for this bit, I want to maybe take the bus for a little bit, uh, and then, or a tram, or whatever, depending on where you are. And then, um, for my last last half mile, I want, want to take a, a, an e-scooter. Uh, and to be able to pay for it all in one integrated service, that would be ruddy amazing. It would be fantastic if that was the case. Um, right at the minute, and putting aside what people say about safety and all these kind of things, I've Felt it was perfectly safe, but I went to somewhere where I knew it was going to feel pretty safe. Um, then, until you can do that, until it's part of a package, um, I don't know that they make sense uh, broken out on their own, unless that's the entirety of your journey. 
I think in real life I would probably walk. Now, I have quite a high threshold for walking. Um, I do tend to do it in place of the underground, in place of buses or whatever in London. That is, if it's if it's at all possible, I will normally walk rather than get those. And that's a pre-COVID thing as well as a as well as a right now thing. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, there is a little bit of there's a little bit of justification that needs done there. I think they're a good idea. I'm really glad the the trials are taking place. I'm interested to see what happens next regarding the trials uh, uh, when they finish and then which places and services roll over into business as usual uh, and into and into into a production setup really. That's it for just now, but don't forget that between now and the next time you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts for the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, then go to motoringpodcast.com slash support to find out all the different ways that you can do that. Uh, as I say, we'll be back very soon, but until then, I've been Alan Bradley and safe scootering.